Welcome to our tutorial on how to set up our files to CNC our base for our gear assembly. So I'm starting off with this in Inventor, just with my base open. I like to open my files as an IPT, that way when I move into a drawing, it loads it very easily for me. So we start with our IPT open, and then we're gonna go ahead and do new drawing. And you can feel free to start from this template, that is a-okay. In this template, we are going to go ahead and change the sheet size. So I come over here to sheet one, I right click on it and then click edit sheet. And I am changing our size to a size A4, which is about the standard eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Also on this side menu, I am going to delete the border as well as the ANSI box and then bring in the base. Make sure that here the scale is in fact one to one and click okay. Now with this, this is the exact size that we need for our base, so we want to make sure we don't change the scaling at all. And then we're going to go ahead and save it two times. The first time we save it, we are saving it as that um, drawing file, so that if we need to come back and edit it, we can. And the second time we save it, we will actually be exporting it as a PDF. That way we can go ahead and take it into Aspire. In the Aspire software, remember that we do get to that through My Applications. So from the Start menu, scroll down, find the letter M, My Applications, and open up Aspire. When we open this program and set up our print job, since we are milling this out on the CNC, it is very important that when we create our new file, we have our accurate job size. The piece of wood that we are carving is four inches wide and five inches tall. It is one quarter or 0.25 inches thick, so we want to double check all of those settings. Click OK to actually start your job, and now we are going to import our file. Now when we viewed this in class, when we previewed it, we clicked on import bitmap to get our image and trace it, but you'll notice the image file types that we can pick from include BMPs, JPGs, GIFs, all of those fun things, but not a PDF. So rather than importing a bitmap, we are actually going to import a vector. So the button right next to it, import vector, and that allows us to select a PDF. When we bring this into Aspire, it will load at the exact size we need it. That is the really nice thing about vectorizing our geometry is that it will not change the sizes. Um, so with this, I have the exact size I need for my base. If I did want to double check, oof, don't do that, Miss Marshall. If I did want to double check the size of it, what I could do is I could look right down here with everything selected and I see the width and the height. The height is 0.7875, which is in inches. Now, when we made this, we made it in millimeters, so I can do a little quick conversion. And in millimeters, it was 20 millimeters tall, and that is in fact 0.7875 inches. So I promise you it is the right size. Now, as we set this up, we do want this to be about in the center of our board. That way we have enough room to put clamps down at the bottom and up at the top without our tool interfering, okay? So now once we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and select just the outside outline. We're gonna make two separate tool paths for this to cut things out. Uh, and also, both of these toolpaths are not going to be the engraving toolpath that we previewed in class. We're actually going to be using a profile toolpath, so we get to try something new. Now, with this profile toolpath, I am not setting it up to cut all the way through. I could, but I am going to set it up to cut about halfway through, and then I am going to use the saws and sanders from there. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and set my cut depth to 0.125, which is equal to an eighth of an inch. And I'm gonna make sure that my end mill is actually a one quarter inch end mill and select. So with this, I am going to make sure that for my outside, the machine vectors are going on the outside of that line, meaning they will cut just beyond the line that is there, but what will be left behind is the exact size that I have established. I'm gonna go ahead and click calculate in this error message, the selector vectors can, selected vectors contain groups with open contours, that is fine. I can click OK and it will still calculate my toolpath. So now when I preview my toolpath, you'll see that I get that little indent that carves most of it out. And again, I am left with the exact size I want. 
Now, the reason I had us do this in two different tool paths is because I want to go outside for the outline, but for these circles, I want to be on the inside when I create my profile tool path. So selecting both of my circles, and by the way, y'all, I can click on one, hold down the shift key and click on the other. That will select them both. Uh, for these, I'm going to select my profile tool path. Again, cut depth of 0.125, quarter inch end mill. But this time I'm going to be on the inside left. So this is going to make sure that the exact diameter of my circle is cut out and no extra, okay? We're gonna go ahead and calculate this one as well. And again, if we have those open contours, it's fine, just click okay. If you then happen to get this error message afterwards, that is not okay, uh, but just in general, the open contours shouldn't give you too much grief. And so actually, I'll tell y'all what, uh, for the sake of making things both a little bit simpler and also a little bit more complicated, uh, I'm not going to make a toolpath for those two. Instead, I am just going to drill them out on the drill press. Uh, so with that, I'm just going to proceed with the one toolpath that I have. So that is going to be profile one, which will show this cut right here. Um, now, like I said, you do have some extra room, so in case you do need to cut some additional things, we've got that room. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's save this toolpath. Before we do that, although let's actually save the entire file, let's save that, save that as a CRV. So we can go ahead and edit it again if we need to. And then we're going to save it as our toolpath. So over here, save toolpath. Now, like we talked about in class, it is super important that you save it as the correct post-processor type. So that post-processor type is going to be the CNC Shark USB ARCs in inches. It should be a .tap file. So this one right here. We're gonna save that toolpath and then we are going to head on over to the lab. Remember when saving your toolpath as a tap file in order to head to the CNC, I do recommend that you do like your initials and a shorter file name um, so that it is easier to find. So at this point, you would go ahead, save that, plug in your flash drive, load that file, and then head over into the lab.